I think my husband is trying to steal my house. Story time. I've been married to my husband Steve for five years now. The house where we live was a gift from my parents to me before I even met Steve. So later on in our relationship, when we decided to move in together, he sold his one bedroom flat and he used this to pay off all of his debt that he had. And there was a lot. So there was nothing left after he sold the house. So before we married, I made him sign a prenup, which basically means that he recognizes that the house is a gift from my parents, which he has no claim to. And I also signed one saying that if he ever bought a house, I would have no claim to that. My house is beautiful. It is not old, it is not broken, it is happy and beautiful but for some reason steve has been pushing me to renovate so he wants to put a mortgage on the house to pay for the renovation but by doing this that would mean that his name would go on the mortgage and that will also mean that he goes on the deed to the house not sure how i feel about this steve is now putting so much pressure on me to do these renovations when my parents and i bought the house it was worth 440k just had it valued and it's now sitting at just over a million so if steve gets his name on the deed he automatically gets like over 500k so now i'm really concerned that if we get a divorce for whatever reason he's just gonna get half of this gift from my parents and we don't have kids so it's all going to Steve. So from one side I've got Steve putting pressure on me to be part owner of the house and on the other side I have my family pressuring me not to do this. What do I do? I accidentally hooked up with a coach at my college. So I was a volleyball player in college and I actually transferred to this one school because of like some things that happened in my personal life and I really didn't know anybody in this place that I moved to. And instead of moving into the dorms or anything like that, I moved into this like residential neighborhood not too far from campus and I was going to be sharing um, the house with these girls that were also on the team. I had not been living there very long and I saw that like the neighbor was throwing a party and I was kind of interested and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go and check out this 4th of July party. And I'm there hanging out and I noticed that like party's kind of over, everybody's leaving and there's a lot of like, there's there's some younger people there, there's some people there with kids and I'm like, oh, this looks like, like my type of crowd, like my type of people that I would wanna hang out with. And I noticed everybody's leaving and there's like a bunch of stuff everywhere. So I decide I'm going to play hostess and help the owner of the house clean up now. I need to know that the owner of the house is very, very good looking. I realize he is a little bit older than me, but I'm just like, I'm about to shoot my shot because he's so handsome. We get to talking. I tell him I just moved into the neighborhood. I didn't bring up that I was going to college because like it literally just didn't come up and we're just talking and he pulls a whole like, well, let me give you a tour of the house. And I'm like, of course, I would love to see your house, specifically your bedroom. We spend that night talking, hooking up. We hook up, obviously. But not only that, we're just like talking. And it feels like I have known this guy for like way longer than I actually have. And we just have like a lot of things in common. And like I said, we it was just one of those like instant connections. And I was like, wow, I like really like this guy. After that, I go home, I give him my number. I'm like, you know, call me sometime, hoping for a repeat. Like two weeks goes by, this guy doesn't call me. Obviously being ghosted sucks, but I had a lot of things on my plate. Like I needed to make friends with these girls. I didn't know if they were gonna like, like me because I was a new girl coming on the team as a senior and you just never know like things are gonna mesh well. So I tried to like put it outside of my brain, but I was like always thinking like, being ghosted sucks, okay? So school and the season and everything is about to start and my new volleyball coach, I meet her and she's kind of just like giving me a tour of the school and showing me like the facilities and where I can work out, where I can practice, everything like that. And she goes, oh, let me introduce you to one of the football coaches and she opens the door and I lock eyes and it's the guy from the party. And my eyes get really big, my mouth drops open. Obviously I like quickly school my features because I don't want her to notice anything, but we look at each other and we're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And I'm like sitting there racking my brain because I'm like, okay, how did we not talk about his job? How did we not talk about like why I moved to this town in the first place? Like, I feel like we talked so much that night, but we didn't talk about obviously anything like super important like that, which we should have. So obviously I have to play it cool. I put my hand out and I'm like, you know, it's nice to meet you, da 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 da. And he's like, plays along as like, it's nice to meet you too. Meanwhile, I'm like freaking out on the inside. I have so many mixed emotions after this because I'm like, number one, holy shit, I can't believe this happened. Like, what am I gonna do? But number two, like obviously he never called me. So I'm still a little like sore over that, but I decide to go over to his house because obviously I know where he lives so that we can have a conversation. Like, what are we gonna do moving forward? I go over there, I'm talking to him and I'm like, let's just pretend this never happened and he's like sounds good and i'm like also like why didn't you call me and he was like 
I wanted to, but I knew like getting, I knew like it was going to be more than just like a fling with you. And that did feel good to hear, but now I'm upset because I would love for something to continue between us, but obviously it can't happen. So we agreed to put it in the past and it's really hard because I see this man everywhere. Like I see him outside mowing his lawn. He sees me when I'm about to go for a run and it just seems like we cannot stay away from each other. And the whole us staying away from each other was going really good until it wasn't. Story time on how this girl put up to my house. Roll call. Ask it for me. And almost have to duke it out with mom. Front row seat. Grab your snacks. Do whatever you got to do. Sit down for this because this is going to be good. Okay. So y'all, long story short, backstory. I was dealing with this guy for like a little bit over a year. Um, Had a very platonic relationship. And it was actually really cool vibes. Like I could be around him, seeing him in public all the time. Like literally just super platonic. Then this man was taking me home every day after school because I didn't have a car at the time. So then I found out that we lived in the same area code and at that, less than two minutes away from each other. Boo, wrap it up and pack your things because you're not talking to nobody no more. I got you on lock. Also, y'all, this man got long hair and always has his hair done. Keep in mind about that. So, y'all, five to six months later, I come back to the school because I haven't talked to him in that, that short amount of time because I haven't been at the school. So he pretty much run into me. He like, oh, yeah, like let's chop it up afterwards. Like, let's catch up. I'm like, all right, cool, bet. Not thinking nothing of it. He get done what he doing. I get done what I'm doing. I hop in the car with him. We come to my house. He start chopping it up with my mom. That's how cool we were. He was chopping it up with mom Dukes. Mom Dukes over here doing overly much. She talking about some, oh yeah, how have you been? La, da, 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 da. You know, they doing what they doing. My mom asked him to do something around the house. He do his little man duties around the house or whatever. Mind y'all, he was coming over to get his hair unbraided, washed, conditioned, and oiled. A bitch was doing motherfucking minimum wage at wife a career status okay so anyways y'all as i'm about to prepare to undo his hair he get a text bing oh i gotta go have my granny y'all like i said he lives less than two minutes away from me so i'm like okay cool he used to do that all the time when he used to come over before talking about something i gotta go help my granny okay cool so he go help his granny i go kick it in the room my mama just chopping it up like oh yeah maybe i think i might start talking to him again boom my mom get a phone call this is important i'm not listening to the phone call because the doorbell just rang at the same time as the phone call Okay, I'm thinking I'm about to go open the door for a bugaboo. Huh? No. It's a grown-ass woman. <laughs> and I thought she was lost. Nope, but she is found. And she found her man, okay? And it led her to my house. <laughs> Mind y'all, it's damn near midnight. So I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is she doing on my doorstep. So old girl in front of my house asking for him to say his first and his last name. Okay, like she wanted the military people. Like she finna come snatch you. Okay, so she asked me, do I know him? Yes, I do. Mm-hmm, indeed. She talking about some, well, I was just wondering because I was wondering what my man was doing over here almost in his damn near midnight. When I tell y'all, my stomach fell to my knees and hit the bottom of my feet. When she said, my man, who's your man? because <laughs> it's not mr smith and you're not talking about my dad so you're lost <laughs> so i'm like how you know him she like that's my man he's been my man for the past six months clock it hold on if i do the math and carry the one and add the two bitch you ain't been here long enough i've been here for a whole year and some change when did you come in the picture then i had to rewind i was gone for six months <laughs> But regardless, so I'm asking her questions, just trying to figure something out. But she coming at me mad aggressive. She like, yeah, like, what's up with it? Like, you feel me? Is you fucking my man? This, that, and the third? Now, I told y'all this was platonic. But I really wanted to get out of her skin and just be like, yeah, what now? But I didn't. <laughs> but I told her it was like, it didn't really matter because I was trying to make sure I had my story straight before I gave it to the judge and the plaintiff so I could make sure I have my case for when I needed to get on his ass. So then my mama come to the door, y'all. <laughs> Mom Deuce come to the door talking about some, what is she doing at the doorstep? The phone call that I was telling y'all about, my neighbors had called and was like, why are there two rowdy people outside your house? Oh boy, that just left my house, Mr. Smith. And old girl that's at my doorstep right now was tussling in the street. And I didn't even know. And they talking about some, yeah, there's two people fighting outside your house. I don't know what they doing, but they was tussling. They was getting it in. So my mom is like, you know what you could do? You could go ask your man since he's your man so much. You could go ask him. He lived less than two minutes away from here. The girl started getting rowdy. She started she start popping it. I said, listen here. I got two goddaughters that sleeping in my room. My mama out here yelling at you. And honestly, I really don't want to have to do too much because I just got my hair pulled. Y'all, 
I'm not trying to fight when I got my hair done. Y'all, if my hair gets pulled from the root of my scalp, oh, we're going to have a field day. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, anyways, the girl talking about some. oh, yeah, your mama talking shit? Yeah, tell her to come outside. We can line it up. What? Bitch, I'm about to do you so cold. You might as well tell people you got jumped. Bitch, fuck is you talking about? So I'm telling her, cool down, like, not too fucking much on my mom, and I'm trying to hold my mom back. Because my mom is, ruh, 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 ruh. she ready to let the dogs out, and she is the dog bitch, okay? So boom, they hearing it popping, my neighbors come outside. My neighbor come outside and yell from across the street talking about some, ain't none of them coming outside. So y'all, I look across the street, and I'm looking at my neighbor like, oh yeah, she popping it, yeah, yeah. Y'all, why look at the silhouette, because she had a light behind her. Oh, girl was holding a... Part three, y'all, and we at the part where my neighbor came out with a little pew pew. So at this point, my neighbor across the street with it, you feel me? And I'm on no parts of that, okay? Because I know she, the way she holding it, she look like she know how to use it. So the girl pretty much like still popping and she's still talking about some, well, mm, I know I'm probably in a white neighborhood and it's that in the third. What? She can't see me because it's dark and because the way my gate is, you can't see through my door. But give credit where credit's due, okay? Bitch, I know I look rice skinned. But give me my credit. What they say, uh, even a black, uh, a drop of black. You feel me? But anyways, getting off track. So I'm pretty much telling her she got one of three options. A, go across the street with the pew pew. <laughs> B, stay over here and get jumped by me and my mom. Or C, leave like a peaceful human being and go to that nigga house. And as soon as I said that, the girl starts hysterically crying. Like, what? Y'all know how, like, when Karens or, like, when people get caught up in their own situation when they wrong and then they don't know what to do other than cry? Yeah, it was one of them situations. Now I'm stuck at the door because, damn, bitch, now I want to give you a hug. How you know I was a sensitive-ass human being? Bitch, you, bitch, you knew? Who sent you? Okay? So I'm pretty much telling her, like, girl, you could have came about this a totally different type of way. Like, you could have not came off, like, totally disrespectful. You could have asked me so many questions. I would have been open to it because 95% of y'all don't be crazy. It be the niggas that be making you crazy. But you make yourself even crazier by popping up to people's houses, y'all. Y'all gotta stop doing that. But anyway, she pretty much is like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just wanted to come over here and just get answers and stuff like that. But girl, you try, you threatening to find my mama and shit. I said, girl, like, what if this would have been a whole, totally different house? And like, what if y'all ass would have got jumped or something? Like, what if I would have not been a, like, a very sympathetic human being? So she pretty much just apologizing for everything. She's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And she gets back in the car and she leaves. Now, mind y'all, there was a whole bunch of other details that went on in this conversation, but I don't want to get into detail because I still have to sum this up. So, mind y'all, I'm so pissed during the whole Mr. This, like, I'm so pissed because he's not answering my phone calls. I'm telling him to come get his business off my front doorstep. Like, what the fuck is going on? So, I pretty much tell my goddaughter's mom and my mom, I'm telling my, I'm telling them I'm finna take the car and I'm finna go over there because I'm finna figure this the fuck out. And I texted them, I said I'm on my way and I need an apology tonight. Like, me and my mother need an apology tonight. So, y'all, I put on some sweats or whatever because I'm ready to get down with him at this point. So, then I put on my sweats or whatever, get in the car, and then I get over there. Why is she in front of the house? My 31 female husband, 32 male, has been destroying my house plants with bleach. I have many, many house plants and even some that were quite expensive and were gifts from my sister. Within the last six months, at least a third of my plants have died. I've had houseplants my whole life due to my late mother's own love of houseplants, and I know a lot about plants. The death of the plants didn't seem related to the lack of light or inconsistent watering or lack of nutrients or even root rot. They just died very suddenly. I tried to not let it upset me too much because plants die, and it was not any of the expensive ones until now. My sister gave me a five-leaf Monstera Albo rooted plant for my birthday two months ago. It was beautiful. This morning, I was crying pretty hard about it as I unpotted it and took the look at the roots. And I was looking hard at this plant and roots to see if its death was pest-related. And that's when I noticed a smell. I sniffed my potting mix and I smelled bleach. The only other adult person in my home with unlimited and unobserved access to my plants is my husband. I wasn't able to talk to him for several hours, but when I could speak to him, I very calmly but very directly asked if he had done something to my plants. He denied it at first. I said I smelled bleach in the potting mix of the elbow my sister had gotten me and that the only person that could have put it there was him and he caved. 
He said he was putting small amounts of bleach into the fertilizer water jugs I prepare. I started crying. I asked him, why, why would you do this? You know, I love these plants. Why would you destroy them? He didn't really answer, nor did he really apologize. The trust I had in him is absolutely gone. I think maybe counseling can help us, but he is the one that did this. But I'm the one that would have to set up the counseling. The angry part of me just wants to be done with the relationship. I know that might seem overboard as we are married and share a child, but I feel that now I'm not safe around my husband. Edit. I thank everyone for giving advice. The town home we live in is mine and my sister's our inheritance from my mother. My husband has an office slash den slash gaming room that is personal space, and there are no plants there. There are also no plants in the kitchen. I'm not a plant hoarder. Like, he has a room for himself. I also have a sunroom, and that is where the concentration of plants live. He has no reason to go in there. It's not access to our backyard or anything. I saw some people saying maybe he's sick of bugs, but I do not have a fungus gnat problem. I did see one person ask why I did not smell the bleach when I was watering, and I can only say my nose wasn't all up in there, maybe. I can also usually smell a natural systemic in my fertilizer water called SNS 209 that smells heavily of rosemary, but I ran out last month and haven't replaced it yet. After our convo yesterday, I needed space. I spent the night in my daughter's room on a trundle bed. I'm going to text my husband today. He usually communicates easier and open ups, opens up more via text rather than face to face. I'm going to ask for a reason and I'll see what he says. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to update on a separate post? Question mark. Who put a question mark on the teleprompter? My husband won't be welcome in my home anymore and I need to find a lawyer ASAP on Monday. I did text him and he admitted again to putting bleach in my fertilizer water. He says it wasn't every jug I made, so that explains why it wasn't all my plants dying, but randomly over the past six months, his exact words that I deserved to be knocked down a peg. After the text communication, I went home from work early and I entered his office. I usually respect his space, absolutely. I don't even go in there to grab dirty dishes. I don't know what I was looking for, but the hundreds of comments saying he was working up to something worse or already was doing something else really worried me. I went in there and I found a drawer full of my daughter's dolls and dollhouse furniture and little toys. No. I bought her that dollhouse for her fourth birthday last year, and she has loved it. She takes such good care of her toys, but something always ends up missing, and it's always my husband who notices. He lectures her about keeping track of her things and how he won't let her play with her dollhouse if she keeps losing things. He keeps going till she starts to sob. When I hear this going, I always step in and ask him to go take a break. I assumed he was losing his cool. I've told him it is not how to deal with this with a kid, and he says he just wants her to grow up responsible. I now see that it was some weird scheme or a setup or something. He would steal the stuff and stash it away and point out and point out that it was gone to berate our daughter till she cried. My sister and her husband and her husband's dad came over this afternoon and they've changed the locks. I've texted to tell him he isn't coming back, that he could come on Saturday morning to grab his essential things, but that my brother-in-law and another man would be there to watch. Sorry if this is unclear or things seem missing. This Reddit post isn't super my priority. I will probably not be updating again. Thank you to everyone who's worried about my safety. You guys know all about the crazy shit my mother does, but I realized I was like, you don't know the whole backstory of why my mother and I are this close. Don't get me wrong, the bitch is crazy, but that bitch is my bitch. My, and you're like, you're calling your mother your bitch. My mom is my best friend. The reason we're so close is because of all the things we went through together. I've always said this about my mom. I'm like, she was meant to be a mother. You know those people who are just meant to be a mother? My mother, not only me, but literally every friend I've ever had or my cousins or everyone, she was genuinely a second mother to everyone. I grew up in a really toxic household due to my father. I don't need to get into the specifics on how horrible my father is. It was just a terrible way to grow up. But the saving grace of it all was my mother. I always said, and I will always say that like, I never needed a father. I never needed that because my mom gave us so much fucking love. I, I genuinely felt like nothing was ever lacking. If anything, I just wanted to get out of that household. From a young age, I knew my father was a fucking asshole. Like I was very vocal to my mom at all times. I'd always be like, why'd you marry him? He's like a horrible, I'd be like eight years old. I'd walk in, I'd be like, why the fuck did you marry him? Like, why did you marry him? And my mom is the opposite of me. Like she is, she hates confrontation. She hates it more than anything in the entire world. Not me. I felt like my mom did not have a voice growing up, especially especially in that household. And the older I got, the more responsible I felt for being that voice for her. There were several times that I would walk in on a fight of my parents and I would be like, no, and who the fuck are you talking to? And I would say that to my father. My mom did not have it in her to fight back, but I did. I was gonna do that. I was around 16 when I went to my mom and I was like, mom, think it's getting so bad. Like I can't 
I, we cannot live here anymore. If this was like a known fact for years and she was like, I know, I know, I just, I don't have any money to get us out of here. I have nothing, literally nothing, not even any self-confidence or anything. And I was like, mom, just please like get us out of here. Like whatever you can do, I like, whatever, please get us out of here. She had no credit, she had no money, she had fucking nothing. But that woman, two months later said, pack up everything while my father was at work. We packed up the entire house and we left and we never went back. Her removing us from that environment was like just the best thing that she could ever do. And I will be forever grateful to my mom for the rest of my fucking life for not only getting my sisters and I out of that environment, for also getting herself out of that. If there was one person that never deserved any of that, it was my mother. She showed up every single day with just so much love for absolutely everybody. Like, no, she never deserved to be treated like that. I wish I could tell you we left that house and it was sunshine and rainbows and everything was so fucking amazing. It was not. One thing about living in a toxic household is like, once you leave that, you're, you don't know how the fuck to act. We're also used to being on like defense mode 24 fucking seven and like always ready to fight because that's what we were used to. Like we were used to always having to protect ourselves that it took so fucking long to realize like, hey, we're okay. We're safe. We're not in that environment anymore. We can relax. And I'm telling you, it took fucking years for us to get to a place where we finally felt that we weren't on the defense and we didn't have to come at each other's necks 24 7 and now we're in a really great place by we i do mean my sisters and i and my mom but like it took a minute to get there the greatest gift that my mom has ever given me has getting us away was getting us away from my father but not only just like us like the greatest gift she's given herself because she deserves the fucking world another reason my mom and i are so close to is because my freshman year of high school i did not go to school for a year I struggled with really bad anxiety and depression i was in and out of treatment programs i had completely isolated myself i had absolutely nobody in my life i didn't understand what was happening with me and like nobody did but the one person who never gave up on me and like stuck by my side through it all. Oh my God, like this is making, I'm such an emotional ass bitch these past couple of days, but like the one person who literally never gave up on me was my mother. Like she drove me to and from treatment. There was never a day I wasn't with her. She would do absolutely anything to try and get a smile on my face. And when everyone told her that like, I wasn't gonna make it through this and like get ready for that, like she was like, no, I'm gonna stick by her side every single fucking second. As crazy as she, as she is and as she can be, like we've all seen the story, we've all seen the fucking story time. She is the most amazing person. I realized I share so much of like the crazy shit that she does that I've never really sat down and told you guys about like why this woman is my world. Listen, I've accepted her fucking crazy self. Like I've accepted it because she's accepted mine. That woman has saved my life multiple times and I would not be the woman I am today without her. Like she is the reason why I'm here. And mark my words, I will retire that woman. That woman will be living in California with me in a couple years. Like I will, I my mom's retirement plan of I and I've always known that from even when I had no fucking money I was like I'm gonna retire this woman like I'm gonna give this woman the world that she deserves she always did that for us and she stopped at literally nothing to make us happy I plan to do the same but that's just like a backstory as to why my mother is my best friend why we're so close and why we have the relationship we do I went to a strip club for the first time on Saturday, which was quite the experience. At about six o'clock, I was at a rooftop bar with my friend Carly. We were just like having drinks, got a little bit tipsy, and we're like, oh my God, let's FaceTime Fur, aka my boyfriend. And we're like, hey, you should drive down to the city tonight so you can come out with us. And he's like, oh, well, it's gonna take me like four hours to get there, won't get there till 11. And we're like, that's fine. And then eventually he was like, okay. Eventually he gets down here, we do a pregame, we do some bar hopping. And at the second bar, this guy came up to us and he was like, you guys look like you're the only couple here that should be together. And we're like, oh my God, thanks. And he's like, yeah, y'all should be on Dawson's Creek, but see, Season two. <laughs> we're like, oh, thanks. Like, I think. And then a couple hours go by, we're like hanging out with the pals. And then we're like, you know what? We want to go clubbing. Like, we want to go shake some ass somewhere. We break off from the group and we try to go to this club next door, but the cover was like $50, which is fucking insane. We're like, yeah, fuck that. And then he was like, kind of as a joke, like, oh, like, what if we just like went to a strip club? And I was like, okay <laughs> so we get there at like two o'clock sit down at the bar i'm like chatting with the bartender titties are fully out <laughs> she's like oh so like do you work in the service industry like i can tell by the way you communicate and i'm like oh yeah but i do like full service because whenever people ask me what i do i just say that i work in a steakhouse because i used to but she goes oh full service huh and i go yeah i'm just a baby girl so we keep talking she's giving us more drinks and i'm getting hammered at this point so i'm like how do you feel in your place of work like do you feel respected <laughs> i'm like essentially
actually becoming the Bernie Sanders of the strip club. I'm like, are you in the union? Are your rights protected? Do you feel sad? And this older stripper comes over to us and she's like probably in her 60s, okay? And she's like, I've been working here for 25 years. Like, don't you want to give sugar some tea? And then poor Ferb, who like really is baby girl, just had no idea what to say. He was kind of like, <laughs> and then fucking sugar takes his head, dunks it in her tits and starts <laughs> Essentially kind of got waterboarded. <laughs> I started chatting up with the normies here and I was sitting next to this guy named Walter and he kind of looked like the, the no neck guy from 90 Day Fiance. I don't remember his name. He was with his wife, Sandra, who was just like, 5'11 trucker lady, you should talk like this. And she's like, oh, give the kids some ones. Get him around on us. Put it on the tab, Walter. <laughs> These other strippers come up to us and start chatting and I'm like, fuck, I'm a feminist. I have to ask them like what they do in their free time. So I'm befriending the strippers. I'm giving them all of Walter's money. By the time we got home, the sun was up. So you know what? Great time had by all. <laughs> My stepdaughter, Gianna, just shared with us this essay that she wrote about Savannah. Just thinking about it is making me cry. Like, oh man, it was the most beautiful essay I've ever read. But because of it, we started talking about Savannah and it reminded me of this really weird thing that happened right after she died. I think Savannah actually knew that it was her time. Um, Right after Savannah died, I found her diary. I am, um, I'm gonna read you the page from her diary. Just this one page. The diary says, Friday, February 10th, 2023. So two days before she passed. I don't know if I'm going crazy because I constantly feel like I'm being watched. As of right now, I feel like it right now. One of the reasons I closed my door all the way is because when I open it just a little bit, I'm scared that somebody's there just staring at me. I had a doctor's appointment today, but I was scared. I was shaking. I said it was because I was worried that there was going to be bad news, which was a lie. I forgot about that too. I then had her annual physical two days before she passed away at the time that everything was fine, everything was good. She said, I was scared someone was watching me. It's just been getting worse lately too. I think I'm going crazy, but I'm not crazy and I feel embarrassed even though I know it shouldn't, I shouldn't be embarrassed. I hear a voice of this woman calling for me. She said it was scary, but it cannot comprehend to the fear that I feel most days lately because I really feel like somebody's watching me. When I had my session with Amy, who is the Bolesky here on TikTok, I don't know if you guys remember that, but she gave me a session and it was really scary accurate and it was absolutely, absolutely mind blowing, okay? Amy, before I even told her this, brought up the fact that my grandmother was watching her, my grandmother who passed away a couple years beforehand. I know this is so hard for me to get through, like, I, I don't know if you guys can even understand me, like, I'm crying so much, but for Amy to tell me that, like, my grandmother was there watching Savannah and waiting for her as she passed and the days leading up to her death, and the fact that Savannah literally wrote about it in her diary is one of the craziest things I've ever heard in my entire life. I just miss her. So, God, I miss her so much. I forgot that that happened. And so I wanted to make this video before I ever forget again. It was so cool. I don't know if that's, that's probably not the right word. It was mind blowing, okay? It was mind blowing information to find out. Just unreal. Yeah. Here's the worst K-pop diet that I've ever been on when I was a K-pop singer right before my debut. I was a solo singer and my first music video came out in 2016 and it was two weeks before uh, the music video was to be filmed. This was what I looked like right before music video. I think it was like 105 pounds. Two weeks before the music video shoot, we were doing a fitting, which is when you try out all the outfits for the music video to see how it looks. It became this outfit that became a problem. So I tried it out and the guy who was there who was working as a staff, he was kind of really mean. He was nice, but like the way he set things was like very petty. He was saying that he was seeing a little bit of stomach in the shadows and that was not fitable for the music video. This was obviously after I went on like stream diet. He said if you don't lose the weight within two weeks and the music video is out, you're not doing it anymore. So obviously I was freaking out and I was like, I need to go on a diet. So what I did. So the staff there, they were watching me as well. They gave me a little bit of like chicken breast, a little bit of spinach, and I had like two, three clementines a day, which was like in total less than 500 calories a day for two weeks. If I was obviously just sitting at an office doing nothing all day and not really spending calories, that wouldn't really have been as extreme. But as a K-pop singer was about to debut, like you are dancing and singing for like 14 hours straight every single day. And on top of that, I was doing PT or personal trainer to like get me toned and fit. Like before this extreme diet, there was one time when I went to eat like Korean chokpa or like pig's feet thing. Somehow this manager found out and he gave me the hardest time about eating something other than diet food. And about how I'll never debut or become a singer if I'm overeating like that. 
I was so moody and I just wanted to like squeeze and like kill everyone at the same time Like I just hated everyone and I didn't know why but clearly after two weeks of diet was really affecting me And I just remember I lost so much weight Like in two weeks in this extreme diet that I look like a skeleton, but you can't really tell in the music video The song was called I'm fine, but clearly I was not fine I was probably like somewhere between 95 to 98 pounds. Can't really tell in the music video and it was shot in like negative degree weather. First of all, I'm not complaining about what happened because everything is lesson learned. If it's your job or your career, sometimes you do have to do extreme things, which is fine. But the energy of the management and how they went about everything was just so effed up now that I'm looking back at it. If you sit me down and say it in a very professional matter, like, I get you. When that manager was just mocking me and he was threatening me that it was all my fault, all their plan was going to go down to shit. It's a bad taste in my mouth and thoughts whenever I think of this person. If you guys want to check out the music video, it's been seven years. Please go look for it on YouTube. I'm fine. Crazy Grace.